Witness a spectacular array of butterflies in their natural habitat and find out about some of the prehistoric creatures that inhabited the sea when Los Angeles was underwater. Then join us as we experience First Fridays at the Natural History Museum of LA County on this edition of Out and About. Here at the Natural History Museum, we have about 30 different butterfly species going in and out of the butterfly pavilion. By in and out, you mean they fly out and in and land here, or what? <laughs> it's more that they're curated by our living collection staff. Uh, our living collection staff will bring in new species of butterfly throughout the season, so more of a reason to come on back. In fact, we just introduced some new owl butterflies into the butterfly pavilion. We are at the Butterfly Pavilion at the Natural History Museum in Los Angeles on another edition of Out and About with Roger Martin. A favorite attraction for families and school children, the Butterfly Pavilion at the Natural History Museum of LA County spreads its wings each spring offering visitors a chance to experience a wide variety of colorful and spectacular species. Well, in the butterfly film, we also have the great big popular blue morpho butterfly, that brilliant blue color that just pops. Uh, we have some new monarch chrysalises, so hopefully in a couple of weeks we'll get monarch butterflies, always popular. And we like to feature a lot of California butterflies as well, including the painted ladies, as well as some of the dog-faced butterflies. Uh, by California, do you mean Southern California or all of California? Uh, these butterfly species that we feature, we, they do come here to Southern California. We can see them in L.A. County, but they can also be found throughout California, even throughout the United States. But they're definitely butterflies that can be found here in L.A. County. Visitors who venture inside the pavilion do so through a series of double doors to protect the inhabitants. And once inside, they are greeted by an astounding array of aerial acrobatics. Guests need to watch where they step as the passive insects alight on almost anything, whether it's on the ground or on the lapel or sleeve of one's jacket. How many species do you have here? Well, in the Butterfly Pavilion, currently we have about 15 species, but throughout our Butterfly Pavilion season, we will feature up to 30 different species of butterflies. Uh, and they all have varied life ranges. Some of them live for about two, three, six weeks at a time. Uh, but yeah, we want to feature as many butterflies as we can. With 20 to 30 different species inhabiting the pavilion, the population inside totals in the hundreds and that gives ample time for intimate butterfly encounters. A leisurely stroll reveals dozens of fluttering species, and to keep them well nourished, the museum has stocked the facility with colorful native plants for them to enjoy, as well as several feeding stations positioned throughout. What is the favorite food of uh, the typical butterfly? Well, all butterflies tend to be liquivores, meaning they have to drink their meals through a proboscis. Uh, some prefer nectar, some prefer fruit juice. Uh, a lot of butterflies do what is known as puddling, where they drink minerals from the mud. And there's even one species of moth in Russia, known as the vampire moth, that has a sharpened proboscis to drink blood. Guests can enjoy a peaceful stroll in the pavilion since there are no vampire moths on the premises. And it's interesting to see the reactions of some of the visitors who sometimes brace themselves for an intimate butterfly encounter. The great thing about our butterfly pavilion that we'll be able to see all the different life stages. So in the pavilion right now, we have, of course, the adult butterflies that are flying around, but you'll be able to spot the eggs on certain plants, be able to spot chrysalises and caterpillars. So we want to show off as much as we can of these varied life stages. Sounds like one stop shop for butterflies today. Absolutely. One stop shop for butterflies. I like that. That should be on the, the brochures. <laughs> 
To experience the fluttering kaleidoscope of color, don't miss the Butterfly Pavilion each spring at the Natural History Museum of L.A. County. The Cretaceous period was uh, the last period in the Mesozoic era, so when dinosaurs are still around. And even back then, in California, we were still underwater. So we don't have a lot of dinosaur fossils from L.A. County, but we have a lot of great marine fossils, including the ammonites. Or even if you go up north, you'll find marine reptiles such as mosasaurs and plesiosaurs. In this special exhibit, the museum invites visitors to experience Los Angeles as it was millions of years ago, when life in the city was much different from the way it is today. I know we're not really underwater right now, but what are some of these things that we're seeing in the exhibit? Yeah, so LA Underwater features a lot of incredible fossils found here in Los Angeles County uh, detailing the 65, 80 million year history of when we used to be underwater. Uh, when did we start collecting all these fossils? Well, the great thing about the fossils featured here, it's not all from the museum technically. Like some of these are collected by folks just exploring, like the very famous Lincoln Heights whale that's featured prominently in this exhibit was actually found during the excavation of an avocado farm back in the 20s. So really showing off how anyone can do paleontology. You just, you don't have to be a capital P paleontologist. You just stumble over a rock and find out it's worth something. Absolutely, anyone can make the next great big discovery, no matter who you are or where you're coming from. Among the big discoveries on display is the Atapatoris corseni, or Corsen strain seal, which is a distant relative of the modern seal. A fossil that was not part of the underwater realm is the skull of a Smilodon, or saber-toothed cat, right alongside the squid-like ammonite. I see there's like a, an octopus-like animal here. Yes, yeah, so this octopus-like animal is known as an ammonite. Uh, it is an ancient cousin of both octopuses and squids. Uh, think of it almost like a nautilus. It's a squid with a big armored shell. It's probably one of the oldest fossils in this exhibit, dating around the late Cretaceous period, so about 65 and a half to about 80 million years old. I see some things uh, swimming around on the wall there. Uh, what are those? Yeah, so a lot of the animals featured on the walls here on the projection screens, these show off some of the fossils that are found here in this room, including things like Megalodon, the giant shark, uh, even basic animals like croakers, which are still a species of fish found in our oceans today, and even leatherback sea turtles, detailing how life has changed through millions of years of history here in L.A. Creatures from Earth's past float in front of visitors as if they were part of an ancient Paleozoic aquarium. At times, it's almost easy to forget that these are merely high-definition projections, especially when the animated depiction of the Corson's strange seal experiences a close call from one of his fellow sea creatures. Well, some of the incredible specimens include things like the Lincoln Heights whale, which is an extinct species of whale that used to swim around L.A. County, the giant megalodon, which is very popular. Uh, one of my favorite animals featured here is something known as a Desmostylian. It is the only group of extinct marine mammals. I wish I could say what they're kind of like, but they're, there's nothing like a Desmostylian that's still alive today. Completely unique. Uh, needless to say, they wouldn't make a good pet. Probably not, no. These giant hippo-sized marine mammals that feed uh, a lot on kelp, probably not the best pets. 
The current exhibit represents the Los Angeles Basin of 90 million years ago, when the area was completely submerged under the Pacific Ocean. The 40 fossils on display reveal secrets of how some of these animals were able to evolve into species we see living today. And collectively, they paint a portrait of how these slow yet dynamic forces of evolution have shaped our planet. Tony, exactly what can we learn from this exhibit? Some of the big takeaways of this exhibit is one, that we can learn how the world has changed through millions of years of history by looking at the fossil evidence, what's been here, what is not here anymore. But one of my favorite takeaways is that uh, you don't have to be a paleontologist to make big discoveries in paleontology. Some of these are made by just stumbling across um, stones in someone's backyard or digging up a farm. but. Yeah, you can make these great big discoveries and you don't have to be a scientist to be part of that scientific process. Being part of that process is one of the attractions that has drawn people to this museum while helping to inspire youngsters to learn about the past in order to promote a positive future. What exactly can we see at this museum? So yeah, if you come by this museum, not only do we have these great exhibits such as Butterfly Pavilion and LA Underwater, but we have our incredible fossil halls, uh, Dinosaur Hall, Age of Mammals, we have our diorama halls filled with incredible taxidermy. And of course, while you're here, we have museum educators such as myself and our whole team to answer any sort of questions that you may have. When we return, we'll see what lurks in the halls when we explore the museum at night. Stay with us as the Natural History Museum's first Friday series pays tribute to the world of kaiju, featuring giant monsters and robots when Out and About continues.